Hi guys, good morning. This is Dan. Welcome back, you guys. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. I greatly appreciate them. Uh, they mean the world to me. If you're interested in supporting the channel in that way, you can look in the drop down menu underneath the daily uh, uh, forecast videos, and there's all different ways of how to find me, how to book a private reading, things you should take into account when watching my readings. Uh, please read that so you get a better sense of what the channel is about and where to find me. This is the daily forecast for all signs. Uh, this is for, wow, we're already at May 26th. It's crazy. So we're talking about Monday, May 26th. This is a general reading for a lot of people. So if it applies, take it. If it doesn't, that's okay too. So let's see what's going on in the cards. What they want us to know. Okay, we have the Ace of Cups. I love this card. I love that it's so heart-centric. This is obviously new emotions coming to us, new perceptions of our emotions, new awareness, depths of emotion uh, coming possibly out of nowhere. This could be surprises, but like, you know, beautiful, beneficial surprises. Awareness is of ourself emotionally, connections to ourself. The Ace being a singular card representing the number one. This could be about how we represent or how we connect to ourselves emotionally. There could be some sort of new perspective that comes about today that we didn't see coming, some new awareness. The reason why I say that is we have that underpinning of the hermit. He's strong, he's grounded. Yes, he's withdrawn, but he's also very much self-focused and digging deep, right, spiritually. And the spirit and the heart or the emotions are kind of two um, aspects of ourselves that are very much intertwined and in how the emotions are how we kind of communicate amongst our mind, body, and our spirit is, is my feeling. And so we might learn something new about our emotional well-being, how to maintain it, how to take care of it, how to place that first above all else. Um, because if we don't do that, we're not really doing ourselves a service, nor are we doing a service to anyone else. We end up finding things like resentment or frustration when we sort of expect things from others that doesn't necessarily pan out or they don't honor us in the way that we expect or, or desire. Now, with the hermit, his intelligence and his spiritual awareness and his grounded Virgo nature, he'll be sort of looking at everything, perceiving everything, and connecting to stuff uh, deeply in a powerful way. And he could be the one opening this door through the heart chakra where we're able to find out just a little bit more about who we are and how we feel and be okay with that, right? Own it a little bit. Like I love how she's holding the power of this sort of energy swirl around her heart. She's, she's in charge. We're in charge of how we feel and we're in charge of what we allow in and how we allow it to make us feel, right? Um, sometimes that's easier said than done. I will acknowledge that, right? It's, sometimes we can get overwhelmed by our emotions, but to me, this card feels empowered today. It feels excited and happy. Um, it feels like something we learn today gives us a bit of a freedom, a newness, a hope, and it would be around how we feel. So using I feel statements today would be great. Um, paying attention to those statements would be even better. Allowing them to sort of, you know, dictate to you and show you a little bit more of who you are at a deeper level through the power of that hermit card. I love that she looks like she's holding almost the whole universe in her hand. So to me, there's a power there, right? There's a connection from our hearts to the whole universe and to everyone and everything that's in it. And I think that as human beings with the ego and the mind, we forget that and we negate that or we see individuality as um, separate. And this to me feels like we're not only connecting to ourselves through our emotions and through the hermit, but maybe also to our place in the universe and where that fits into the grander scheme of everything else, right? So. I think that this should be a day that feels, I don't know if happy is the right word, but it should feel a little bit uh, free. I get a feeling of exuberance or excitement, maybe a little bit of happiness or a shift, um, a lightness, uh, a newness that we might find inspiring or that we might want to take with us today and utilize in some way. This could be around multiple situations for different people, but acknowledge it when it comes be grateful for it when it comes and like embrace it like she's holding it here with her hands. 
It's sort of her first priority. It's very sacred and special to her. She understands and honors it, right? And she keeps it right in front of her in a place of um, honor in my mind, right? So do that today and see what that gets for you. See how that connects you to others. See how that connects you to yourself. Be perceptive. Feel your way through it. Um, and allow those feelings to also educate the hermit too, because he's underneath this card sort of seeking that deeper spiritual understanding. So each of us are sort of seeking that connection um, and where we fit. So allow that to be defined or further defined, at least not fully defined, but further defined uh, for ourselves today through our emotions. Now with the Lightworker Oracle. Oh, wow. Interesting. We have the second ray of wisdom, card number two. What I love about this is we have card number one, which is ace. We have card number two, which would be twos always make me think of relationships. And the aces make me think of relationships to the self. And I always say that about twos also, they can represent as relationships to the self. When I look at this woman, she's holding that ball of light around her heart chakra. They're both holding this wisdom, this emotional wisdom. And, and the hermit would represent that wisdom too, of connecting to our higher selves, connecting to the angel that resides within us or our spirit, right? Uh, we don't necessarily know that we're not angels our own self when we're acting in our highest and, and greatest good, right? And so when I, what I love about these two women is they're reminding us that there is an energy, there is a power, there is a wisdom within how we feel. And yes, feelings aren't always easy, but they're, um, they're packed full of information for us at different levels of who we are. I mean, if you think about it, we can feel mentally, we can feel emotionally, obviously, we can feel um, physically, we can feel pain, uh, and we store all of this stuff in our in our physical being, in our mental being, in our, uh, our emotional being. Does that make sense? So we should pay attention to this stuff because there is a wisdom here that's being taught to us that the hermit might desire or he might be seeking today. Um, and I love that we're also being guided, whether that angel behind her is our spirit guide or our own higher self, we are being guided. We're not alone in this journey or this search or this connection. We need to figure out where we, excuse me, I'm a little gassy this morning. <laughs> we need to figure out where we fit in the world and be okay with that today. And that's kind of the feeling that I get from these two cards is the beginning of that and, and the centering of that. This light at both of these women's chests at their heart chakra speaks to connecting to that and feeling centered and grounded in that because that we've got the strength of that hermit underneath here uh, grounding us. So it's like we, through the singularity of the ace, we find that connection to self. And then through the two, we begin to connect to others. Remember that stone this um, week is family. So finding the family of our choosing or our, if it's our earth family, our our light worker family, our, you know, friend family, whatever. It's almost like we're learning about ourselves so that we can better connect to others and understand others and be compassionate to ourselves so that we can thus be compassionate to others. So let me read the second ray of wisdom to you. The second ray of wisdom is a consciousness of loving wisdom straight from the heart of the universe. It amplifies the magnetic power of attraction, empowering you to pull into your life all that is needed for your life's work. It brings the opportunity to heal, restore, and understand through the power of love and the light of ancient wisdom. The spiritual master known as the Buddha is with you now to help you f fully receive and integrate the blessings of this ray of light from the universe. Well, we have Buddha right here. So he's looking over these cards and quite happy that they've arrived today. Allow your own inner Buddha to come forth, guys. Here's the invocation. If you feel so inclined, stop and start the video and say it along with me. I think that these are very powerful. I now accept of my own free will, the blessing and grace of the second ray of wisdom in my life. Through unconditional love and divine mercy, I open my heart with joy to the magnetic and creative field of attraction. I gratefully open up to the abundance in all ways with trust, wisdom, and serenity. The universe provides all that I want and need with grace, love, and perfect timing. Thank you, universe. I call on the loving assistance of the genuine ascended master known as the Buddha in all aspects of this process so that all beings can receive the loving benefit of this spiritual gift according to divine compassion. 
through divine grace, so be it. I love that it says in there about the uh, connecting to the universe. Uh, the universe provides all I want and need with grace, love, and perfect timing. And I said, like, it feels like she's holding the universe in her hands there. So I love that. There's definitely an opportunity here to connect at a much deeper, heartfelt, spiritual level today. I would utilize it as best as you can. If you don't achieve it, don't judge yourself. Just be kind to yourself. And the word here is desire. So desire to me always takes me to like the wand suit, that fire, that passion, that impulsivity, the thing that we really want at a deep, deep level. Desire isn't necessarily just sexual in nature, right? Desire can be something that we want so badly from in our heart. We need to acknowledge that today. When we look at the lights emanating from these women's hearts, to me, it makes me think about what is it that we truly desire? And then how do we attract that to us? This second ray of wisdom is all about having that wisdom to effortlessly attract that to us through the honoring of our emotions and the desire of what it is that we want. Is that desire better connection to a family of one's choosing or to a family of one's understanding? Is that a desire to be seen by that family, whoever that family may be? Allow yourself to have that. Allow yourself to attract that. Allow yourself to want that at a heartfelt emotional level that's pure and true. There's nothing wrong with that. And um, honor yourself today. Go after what it is that you do desire. Make sure that you are feeling the good feelings that will help you to create it and attract it because today feels like a powerful day to do that. You're going to get some definite information from these cards and that hermit underneath. It'll inform you in some way emotionally that should be rather profound and get you closer to that with which you desire. I hope that's the case. That is your forecast today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you like, and subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys tomorrow to see how we build on this energy. Have a great day. Bye-bye.